Our next speaker is a stained glass mosaic artist who lived in Bradford since 2004. She will talk about her journey from accidental artist to art cooperative owner in downtown Bradford and how this process brings not only artists but the community together in support of collaboration and creative thinking. Please help me welcome Lily Crawford. Okay, I'm not used to this. Um, welcome. Thank you very much, Anna and Glenn Hurst, for inviting me to speak to you all this evening. It is an honor, a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, I'm Lily Crawford, and as Anna mentioned, I am a stained glass mosaic artist, although when they posted it on Facebook, it was uh, written as strained glass mosaic artist. <laughs> there are no coincidences. <laughs> I am also the proud owner of the Crawford Collective, which I will be sure to talk about. Um, my first career was as an optician. Uh, I, I ended up owning, starting a business, L. Crawford Opticians, located in downtown Brantford. Uh, call that my first career. We won't get to that. Uh, the second career, I ended up entering outside sales, and I dealt with industrial clients. Um, I was very good at it. Uh, a number of my clients, large clients that you would recognize would be uh, Ford, Motor Company of Canada, Stelco, DeFasco. I went into factories on the plant floors, dealt with maintenance managers, um, right up to presidents, CEOs, um, and it, it, it was good, but it, it, it didn't, it wasn't, something wasn't right. Um, and that leads to this slide. Life beats down and crushes a soul, and art reminds you that you have one. <laughs> After those first two careers, I, the nicest way to phrase it would be I burned out, completely burned out. Um, I couldn't do what I was doing in, any longer. It felt false. It, it wasn't me. The first career was one of my father's choosing. Eastern European, enough said. <laughs> the second career, um, I didn't have many options. My only um, degree was as a licensed ophthalmic dispenser. Good luck finding another job other than being an optician. Outside sales opened up. So yes, I, I was ground down. Um, during this period, um, I was on the couch and I, I was on the internet and I came across a gardening site that I became a member of. And I saw a, a picture that I, I still can't forget. It, she was a mosaic artist based out of London, England. And she created these pieces that were garden pieces. And they just took my breath away. And I so wanted to own one of them, but it was beyond my financial capabilities at the time. Yet it would not leave my mind. So being who I am, um, within a few weeks, I decided to go out and try to do this on my own. I mean, how hard could it be? <laughs> I went out, um, I picked up some flagstone, I picked up, I sourced out stained glass, uh, picked up pebbles down by the Grand River. And at the time, I did not realize that you, you actually are able to cut glass. So I brought those sheets of glass home and dropped them in my backyard, <laughs> much to the chagrin and horror of my partner at the time. At the time is key. <laughs> and I took these pieces and fit them, as you will see, to two of my early primitive pieces, um, tried to place them into something that was recognizable. The one here is supposed to be a dragonfly. Uh, this one here, sunset. So that was the beginning of my career in 2011, my, my current career. My last career. Yes, my last career. Hopefully you will recognize these, because if not, then I should just leave now. Uh, the one is John Lennon, another Marilyn Monroe. The last one is Edward Scissorhands. Um, this was good. It, it, I, I took recognizable figures and I replicated them using my medium, which was stained glass. Um, was fairly successful, not, not enough to make a living, but people started buying them. And unfortunately, and I speak for myself, 
As an artist, I believe that's where our validation often comes from, is when somebody assigns a monetary value to something that you've created and is willing to part with their hard-earned money and says, yes, I want that. I will give you money for it. These were successful in, in, that, in that realm. Um, sorry. No, 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 no. Sorry. You want to <laughs> so it was beautiful. <laughs> during this time, uh, I had the fortune to meet Arlene Lasky, who many of you, I'm sure, know. Um, she approached me regarding possibly uh, applying to become a member of the Brandt Studio Tour. Studio Tour would imply that you have a studio. At the time, I was working off of my kitchen table. Arlene came out to, to my home uh, to view my studio, and she wasn't concerned about that, as many of the artists within our community don't have professional studios. They work out of their basements, out of their sheds, out of their garages, kitchen tables, believe it or not. Um, her main concern was that she saw something in what I was doing, but she made it very clear that should I be accepted into the Brandt Studio Tour, I was not to be replicating these known images. They wanted me to draw upon my own original creations. Thank you, Arlene, which led me to some of these works. This here is called Celebration. This was one of the first pieces, and it actually showed here at Glenhurst during, during their War and Peace uh, juried show. I applied, but yes, I was part of this show. Whoa. Um, this is another one, that uh, Tree of Life. This was not smashing glass. This was cutting each leaf painstakingly, scars to prove it. Um, and yes, Brandt Studio Tour accepted me. This is the back deck of my home, which during the studio tour, that was my studio. Um, Brandt Studio Tour taking place the first weekend of October. Typically is my luck, and, and everything is about me, you will come to know this. <laughs> <laughs> my luck would call for that first weekend to be rainy, windy, blustery, cold, just miserable. And yet people, the success of that tour, the amount of people that were willing to come out to my home, traipsed down the wet sod around the side of the house to come around and up onto the deck to view my works, led me to decide that I did indeed need a true studio space. Not my kitchen table, not my back deck. This was the perfect space. Um, it, had, it has a window, it's large enough, there's a workstation there. There's enough wall space to hang my work. Um, this was perfect. Not uh, Perfection doesn't always work out the way you expect it to. Um, I referred to Arlene last year earlier. I contacted Arlene because I, she's become, I'm very fortunate that she's become a, a friend and a mentor, and I very much appreciate her opinion. I knew that the studio space that I was hoping to launch would have to be in downtown Brantford. My roots for my previous business were based in a downtown location. The downtown of any community is the heart and soul. There was no question that's where I needed to be. Arlene and I, as we ventured out to look at different retail locations available in downtown, happened to stumble across this one. This is a space tidied up. You can see this is much larger than, than what I could possibly ever hope to fill. But as we walked in, I'm not exaggerating, we walked into this space and it was just, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't sing, but um, beautiful windows, morning light streaming in, eventually hardwood floors. This space just cried out. This was the space. It deserved to have beautiful art on the wall. Not, not only my art, but beautiful works. Um, which led me to approach the landlord and sign a lease on my own. With the hopes that other artists within the community would share my vision and come on board. I was very fortunate at the beginning. Um, our ten founding members 
are Judy Dean, Laura Pottier, Ralph Heather, Jeanette Obink, Heather Vollins, Suzanne Earls, Dean Ellis, Shirley Brunton, myself, and Arlene Lasky. Arlene was, uh, she didn't even see the space. When I told her that I had appointments lined up, she said, you're a crazy bitch, but I'm in. <laughs> That's not swearing, Brian. That's not swearing. That's still on. <laughs> um, currently today, I'm very proud to say that we are up to 16 members. Uh, two of the original members dropped out. The others have all remained on board, which I, I believe is a huge testament to, to the collective. Um, and that leads us to the Crawford Collective, currently home to 16 local artists. Our grand opening was critical. Many of you will recognize this very handsome gentleman. And if you don't, he is at the back of the room. <laughs> Brian Pickering of Glenhurst. Uh, we did our grand opening February 28th. It was critical that we, that first impression, we made a great one. We brought Brian on board because obviously he does such an astounding job here at, at Glenhurst. We wanted the best. And he did a, an amazing show for us. I am proud to say that since then, the opening nerves dissipated. And um, every single show since then, the members have hung almost as well as you did, Brian. Almost. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're located at 4 King Street, which, if you haven't guessed by now, is in downtown Brantford. We are located between Colburn Street and Deleuze. And for those of you trying to picture that, KFC or Sophia's Bakery. We're almost smack dab in the middle. The new YMCA, we're almost gonna, we're almost kitty corner to the new YMCA. This is an exterior shot. Um, if you haven't come out yet and you come out in the evenings, we will have the lights on and welcome you with open arms. Um, we've had a, a number of initiatives that we've implemented, and right now my mouth is so dry, excuse me. One of them is First Fridays. First Fridays is, um, as it says, First Fridays. We have an opening reception, open to the public from 6 to 9 p.m. And we change out our artwork every two months we host a guest artist every month. So that first Friday of the month is either and or our changeover and or our guest artist. I hope that makes sense. I just can't put it together any clearer than that. Um, you just come and find out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mom. You're no, welcome. No, no, no. <laughs> sit, sit, sit. Um, this past year, it's been really busy. We also participated in Culture Days, Doors Unhinged. Um, a num we were involved all three days. A number of our members hosted different workshops. We have pictured Jeanette Obig, who uh, did a still life drawing <coughs> workshop. Dean Ellis, who did uh, a workshop on pointillism. Georgina Brown, who did a, a jewelry workshop. We had live entertainment with Metronome and Morris here in the room somewhere, unless she's disappeared. Uh, at the end here is Judy Dean, who is our potter. And in the middle, we did a collaborative workshop with my medium, Stained Glass Mosaics. <coughs> we also participated again, Anna, how many times do I have to thank you? <laughs> Anna invited us to participate under the Brant Tourism uh, umbrella during the 2015 Hamilton Super Crawl. While there, we set up this interactive piece. And again, my life, again, remember, me, 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 me. It was another rainy, cold, blustery, <laughs> windy, crappy weekend. We had people lined up waiting to add their piece to this interactive mosaic. The piece is currently on display at McMaster Innovation Park. We had 105 individuals add a piece to that and at the end of it, they all signed our book, and around the border of that piece, we have each of their names listed, written on the piece, as a contributing artist. That, that was a really exciting weekend. We've implemented uh, the guest artist wall, so that, to be all inclusive, uh, the space is, is what it is. And at 16 members right now, we're at our maximum insofar as membership. 
<coughs> so to be all inclusive, we've opened up an area within the collective to welcome uh, a visiting guest artist every month. Um, I, I think it's another big testament to the collective that the majority of our, our new members have come on board after being guest artists. Um, our most recent guest artist, we hosted the grade seven and eight art students from Braemar House School. This was their first uh, public exhibition. And this, was, this truly was a magical evening, having these children and their parents there in that setting. Um, yeah, it, it was quite nice. It was special. Um, tonight, a number of our members are not here because another collaboration that we are involved with is ongoing right now. Norfolk Art Centre in Simcoe um, invited us to do a group show. Uh, each of the members that, partic that is participating was invited to choose from Norfolk Art Centre's permanent collection and pair it with one of our own works. And that is ongoing right now. The second night of lightning talks is taking place right now as we speak. So as I finish here, I'm gonna go and check on those members and make sure they mention the Crawford Collective. Um, the Crawford Collective represents some of the highest caliber artists in our area. And I'm not exaggerating. Artists with upcoming shows at Glenhurst. That shows the high caliber. Arlene Lasky is one of those that has an upcoming show later this year. Keith Shearsby has a show beginning at the end of this month. He's part of a group show highlighting the Grand River. Linda Blakeney also has an upcoming show this year. Um, besides fine art, and I think this is a, an important point, we also carry a large assortment of affordable and unique gift items crafted by our local artisans. We have two jewelry artisans. One is Shirley Brunton, who does really cool stuff. Cool, cool stuff. Somebody, I think it was Matthew that approached me earlier um, about, no, maybe it was somebody else. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so we have jewelry. We have beautiful wood turn bowls by Dan Wellsby. Not only is Dan local, but the wood that he sources out is also local. He'll get phone calls. Dan's got to be in his <coughs> late 60s. And he'll get phone calls from people saying, I just have a tree that fell in my backyard. Do you want the wood? And out he trudges on his own, and he gets this wood, takes it home, does whatever he does to it, takes a couple of years, and then crafts these incredible bowls. Um, we have beautiful, beautiful glasswork by Gordon Hill. We have um, soapstone carvings, other carvings as well by Dean Ellis. And this, this is a shot of our gallery. And the question that I, I'm putting to you is how many of you have a piece of art that you've purchased, <coughs> hung it in a sacred place in your home, and it makes you feel so good every time you look at it? And I see heads nodding. That is the power of art. <coughs> the Crawford Collective is a space where people can feel comfortable and relaxed. I don't, if you come into the collective, I'm not going to be wearing pantyhose and a dress. <laughs> this is First Friday attire or Glenhurst attire. So you will feel comfortable. Um, if you have a group that needs a place to be creative and solve problems, then we can help. We can arrange, we can host your meetings. Uh, we can seat up to 15 to 20 people. All you need, I don't cater, I don't cook. That's Linda's okay. realm. Um, all you need to do is bring yourselves refreshments and notepads. Um, and before I go to that slide, the arts have always been used to renovate and rejuvenate downtown cores. We don't have to look too far. Yorkville, Soho, New York, and most recently, Hamilton's James Street North. The 2014 Super Crawl in Hamilton had an, an attendance of over 200,000 people. That was on James Street North, one street. It the, used to be a dive. <coughs> exactly. It used to be a horrible place. Exactly. And, and what, they've done, what Hamilton has done, and that's our closest neighbor mm -hmm. to have revitalized that area using art. 
extremely good restaurants there. The success of the revitalization of our downtown core will rely on the arts, and the arts will rely on you to come downtown. We hope to see you soon at the Crawford Collective, where we have available for sale an eclectic variety of works to enhance your life and your living space. And that is a serious statement. I stand behind it. By supporting our artists, be it at the Collective, be it at Glenhurst, artists within our community, you will help our artists and our community flourish. And my closing slide, put away the cane, Anna. I'm going to leave it to George Bernard Shaw. Without art, the crudeness of reality would make the world unbearable. And that's my presentation. She has done taking guitar with mosaic stained glass on the guitar. Thanks, Brian. Ten bucks later.